Okay, let's talk about the TEAS exam and specifically the mathematics that you are going to want to know to be very confident about uh, taking this exam. Now, if you're watching this video, uh, I'm assuming that you know what the TEAS exam, just in case you don't know, it is a um, entrance exam that nursing schools use. So they'll use uh, either the TEAS exam, there's other exams out there, the HESI exam, uh, RNE exam, I believe there's another one, NET exam. Now this is different than the NCLEX, the NCLEX uh, exam. That's when you've completed your nursing school and you got to get certified, etc. So a lot of exams and um, you know in the nursing field um, and all of them involve math. But these exams here, specifically like the TEAS or entrance exams, and so you can get into nursing uh, school. So it's really a measurement of your academic, general academic aptitudes in mathematics, um, science, etc. So you're going to want to do very well, not just for the exam, but you just want to have strong math skills. And if you're in school now, uh, your best chance, um, assuming maybe you're in high school, or you're in college, wherever you may be at in life, if you're in the study mode, then you really want to, you know, uh, invest a lot of time at least as much time as you want into a good program to significantly increase your math skills. You don't want to just kind of like do a quick review and then that's it. You just don't know where you're going to need these. If you're struggling with the TEAS um, mathematics or just learning math in general and you uh, find that you like my teaching style, I offer a full um, math prep course for the TEAS. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. But what I want to do is um, uh, talk about this basic problem here. So this is a percent problem. So we're going to talk about this here in a moment. Um, as a matter of fact, if you want to pause the video and try to get the answer, then that's great too. Let me just read the question. So 18% of what number is 50? So 18% of what number is 50? So that's the question. If you think you could do it, go ahead and pause the video. We'll talk about this particular problem and then I'll kind of relate to some other uh, things that you want to be thinking about in terms of the TEAS exam. So go ahead and take a moment and do that if you can. Okay, let's talk about percent. Now you definitely as a nurse you definitely want to go you want to know um, uh, some particular math set of math skills are more critical than others. For example, you're not going to be solving quadratic equations, you know, uh, doing, you know, graphing parabolas or, or those type of things as a nurse. But things that you're going to definitely, you know, be uh, expected to know or, or be really strong in is really basic fundamental math. Fractions, uh, that would include decimals, okay, fractions, decimals, ratios, proportions, percent, uh, conversion of units of measure. That's These are huge. These are like core things you're, you're definitely going to want to know that are applicable in your actual career. However, remember the TAS uh, exam is they're going to be testing on your general math aptitude, um, not just on these particular subjects. So basically, what did you remember coming out of high school? You know, did you take a college prep? math track you know that would basically look like algebra one geometry algebra two so you know you're kind of bringing your whole set of math uh knowledge to this exam not just the ones that you're going to really be using the most as a nurse but these these are ones that are, you really have to know but let's just take a look at this one here this basic percent problem and this would be a good indicator now percent problems um it can be solved in a, a variety of different ways. It's percent is actually taught in a few different um, uh, uh, manners, if you will. So I'm going to show you what I think is an easy way to handle percent problems. Um, but if you got the same answer that I got and you know how to do percent problems, then stick with that. All right, let's take a look at this problem. Now, 18% of one number. Let's just take a look at another quick, easier problem before I get into this. 18% of 300, 18% of 300. So pretty much everyone should know how to do this. At least I hope that's the case. And let me get my trusty calculator out of here. So how do we handle this? Well, 18% of 300, what we do is we change the percent to a decimal, right? So 
0.18 and then we multiply it by this number so 0.18 times 300 and so let me do this in my calculator 0.18 times 300 is 54 okay so 18 percent of 300 is let's just kind of finish make a statement here is 54 okay so the deal is when we have a percent question we're going to want to change the percent into a decimal now how do we do that well 18.0 percent or 18 percent right we, and the reason why I wrote the point O is I wanted you to see where the decimal points at so 18 percent is the same thing as 18.0 percent so to change a percent into a decimal we're gonna move the decimal point two places to the left so 18 percent is equivalent to the decimal 0.18 all right now I don't want to turn this this particular video into an entire lesson on percent I'm just kind of highlighting some fundamental concepts that you should know okay so are we good with that all right hopefully we are let's move on okay so now we know that if we want to find a percent of a number okay we change the percent to a decimal we just multiply by the number okay we just kind of move this out of the way we'll keep this little basic problem in mind now let's get back to our um, nice little problem here so 18 percent of what number so in algebra if I state some uh, a, a phrase like what number okay what number you should know interpret that this is a variable so we can write this as 18 percent of X is 50 now in algebra this is really important this word is is equivalent to an equal sign so 18 percent of X is equal equal to 50 now some of you out there probably are saying boy he's really going a long way you know taking it solving this problem over explaining I know how to do this problem he's boring me yada yada listen <laughs> my background I'm a math teacher taught sixth grade at the college taught a little you know do a lot in the mathematics field what I'm teaching you here is not to how to do this one specific little problem I'm giving you the bigger picture concepts so you can handle any percent scenario more complicated percent problems so just stick with me um, now if you got this problem right you know that's great again you know I'll be a little redundant if you know how to handle a variety of percent problems then stick with your way you don't have to relearn it in this manner but you should even you should be aware of how to handle equations the way or handle problems the way I'm kind of laying them out here okay it's gonna benefit you um, irregardless okay so let's go to it 18% of X is equal to 50 okay this is the same as this question 18% of what number is 50 okay so 18% of X or some number right is equal to 50 but now let's kind of clean this up a little bit more 18% of X is equal to 50 now what I'm driving at here is I want to turn this into an equation get this I want I don't want to erase this I want to kind of keep this here okay so now let's look at our original basic problem if I want to find a percent of a number like I did down here if I want to find a percent of a number like 18 percent of 300 what did I do well I changed the percent into a decimal and multiplied by the number and then that gave me the answer so if I want to find 18 percent of this some number X what I'm going to do is multiply 0.18 times the number so 0.18 times X is 18 percent of whatever that number X is but I do know that the answer is equal to 50 okay so I know that 18 percent of this number is equal to 50 so the question is what number okay 18 percent of what number is equal to 50 well what I've done here I set up a nice little basic algebra equation so 0.18 times X is equal to 50 so I'm going to tell you right now for the TEAS uh, exam you're going to need to know how to solve basic equations so this equation here you should be able to solve so how do we solve 0.18 X equals 50 well what I'm going to do is divide both sides of the equation by 0.18 okay so the answer is going to be 50 divided by 0.18 let me go ahead and take my trusty calculator out and if you're following along with me maybe you want to do the same 
So 50 divided by 0.18 is equal to approximately 277, say 0.7. Okay. There's other decimals. It keeps going on and on, but that's close enough. So 277.7 is the answer. So 18% of what number? Well, 277.7 is 50. Now let's go ahead and check our work, right? So 0.18 or 18% times 277.7 should be pretty close to 50. So let's do that. Let's multiply 0.18 times 277.7 and you see you should get something like around like 49.986 it's pretty close to 50 the only reason we're not exactly at 50 is because I kind of rounded off here with the decimal answer so this is how we use equations and um, the actual concept of what percent is and, and when actually we can even get further into percent with using ratios proportions and, and other definitions but well, I love solving percent problems using basic equations because you're really in control of the problem. And you can solve for all different types of variables. Believe me, percent problems can get a little tricky. And if you go too quick, you're like, oh, I know how to solve this problem. But a lot of students, what they'll do, they'll they'll apply the wrong, they'll be like, do I multiply by that or divide by that? Do I do? And they'll confuse things and they'll just try to solve the problem by remembering some procedure and then they'll get it they they'll get it wrong and their answer doesn't make sense if they really think about it so again with the percent you can use basic equations like this to uh, convert the problem into a basic little algebra equation and solve and then you can always check your your work so anyways um, just a real quick practice problem on percent again these um, concepts here fractions decimals ratios proportions percent conversion um, you know, basic inequalities, all that units of measure, um, uh, mean, median, and mode, you know, all this kind of stuff. These are kind of like the core, core topics you really want to master um, as a nursing student. But when you're, you know, applying for a school, you know, nursing school, you know, going to, you know, again, you're going to want to know more than that. You're going to want to know algebra, geometry. You really want to, you know, uh, bring your whole, you know, toolkit math skills you'd learn this along the way anyways I mean you, you if you you know in high school high school mathematics you know you've seen it so they kind of want to see where you're uh, stand I did read an article um, and you probably uh, you as the nursing candidate I'm um, thinking that who's watching this video probably already know this that nursing uh, there's a critical shortage of nurses uh, in this country or, or going to be um, and it, it just makes sense which is the amount of baby boomers retiring and, and uh, you know, our population growth. But nursing school is becoming more and more competitive um, to get into a good nursing school. So I don't know what that is, but um, apparently according to this one particular article, it is, you know, it's becoming more challenging. Even students with good, good academic background are finding it tougher to get in. Now, take this with a grain of salt. This is just what I read. But nevertheless, when it comes to your your career as a nurse, you don't want to take any chances. Okay, you want to do the best you can um, on all these components. So, with respect to the math um, portion of the TAS exam, you know that's only one one part of what you have to focus on. Uh, you know, take it serious. All right, and all good things, you know, take time. They take effort. So it, it is a lot but you can do it. Again, if you like my teaching style, I offer uh, a complete, really comprehensive, extremely comprehensive uh, course, math course for the TAS. You can check that out if you'd like to. I also have many, many, literally hundreds of YouTube videos on my channel that are definitely gonna um, benefit you as well. But uh, find yourself a good program, um, you know, a teacher, a, a math teacher, someone that you, you know, um, like to learn from, that you understand, a, a good program, get yourself some practice tests, and, you know, take take the effort to really, you know, um, you know, work at it. Um, so let me um, go and wrap this video up. If you enjoyed it, hey, I'd definitely appreciate a thumbs up. Let me get some feedback. Let me know what you're experiencing uh, with your nursing, you know, uh, aspirations, you know, or, or is it tough? Do you feel like it's, you know, it's getting um, tougher to get in uh, to school? Maybe you have some tips or maybe you uh, can, you know, help me out by with your feedback, which, you know, I try to read as many comments as I can, but it's the way I learn and 
learning from you, I can kind of make um, better videos. So I wish you all the best as a nurse, you know, nursing candidate. We definitely need them. Believe me, everyone has been impacted by healthcare professionals in our life. Um, so uh, more power to you. I only wish you all the best. Thanks for watching and have a great day.